Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Linode Web Hosting. If you guys are trying to get your website out, you're gonna save a lot of money over Azure, AWS, or the Google Cloud by choosing Linode. It's not just price either. Like say you're trying to learn a new skill, cybersecurity for instance. If you wanna learn cybersecurity, there's no way you're gonna become familiar without understanding like the Linux operating system. So sure, you could probably use VirtualBox and try to spin up some sort of Ubuntu thing, but if you guys have ever done that, especially on a Windows machine, it's not the same thing as logging right into a Linux command. They're regularly keeping their software up to date and they have numerous Linux distros to choose from. Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, what we're gonna be looking at is five beginner projects that every programmer should create. And you should try to create this at least once. Most likely you're gonna have to create these types of projects multiple times before you get good but these are five separate types of projects. So these are all projects that I've created myself. And looking back in hindsight, it makes a whole lot of sense. Every time you create a new project, you learn much more than watching a tutorial or reading a book. I've always said on this channel since day one, just start coding, create your projects. So first things first, if you're learning to code and you do not have a environment set up where you can write your code and stop the execution of your code midway so you can actually debug. For instance, this is VS Code and I'm putting break line, uh, like breakpoints on my code. And if I press F5, I can just go ahead and, and debug this as a Python module and then I hit my breakpoint so I can stop things in the middle of the execution. So when you have a really, really complicated program, if you can't do that, that should be your first project. I don't give a shit what language you're using. You have to be able to debug. And if you can't do that, that should be your first project. Figure out how do I do what I just showed you how to do. And uh, there's a hint. Honestly, I got videos all over my channel. If you can't reach them, just comment and I'll link directly to it. But you need to be able to debug, whether it's Python, Node, even JavaScript in a browser, whatever it is, you have to know how to put those breakpoints there and stop it. All right, so the first up, and this is always where beginner programmers should start, and it seems like we want to jump into like web development and React and all this shit. Like, but if you're using Java, C Sharp, Python, all this stuff, it takes system arguments. So th these command line arguments, the way that we set up our modern architecture when we're dealing with shell scripts or we're dealing with NPM modules and we're firing off uh, different scripts within our package.json, a lot of this may not make any sense to you beginner developers, but the, the point I'm trying to make is that you feed arguments into your script and your script behaves accordingly. So you can write a script that is dynamic based on the arguments that you pass into the mug. Now, this is an example of that. Like, so here is just a simple Python console application that says, your wish is my command, sire. It's supposed to be like medieval or whatever. I took me two seconds to do this. Make this as creative as you want. This is actually where I started. I remember this, these were the first Perl programs I ever made. This is Python, but I did the same thing in Perl. It doesn't matter what language, but you're taking in command line arguments and then you're responding based off of that. So you're using basic if else structure and all that stuff. But it allows you to get really good at like, okay, I have a program that takes in some stuff. And then you quickly realize, oh shit, I can't have a program that just takes in stuff. It has to take in a specific thing, right? And that specific thing has to be a specific data type. Like it might be a number or it could be a string or it could be an object or it could be a list. Like who knows? It's all up to you. Now, but this specific thing, it just says, it, it, it's just a, a complete infinite loop, which is another reason. Why would you want to do an inf infinite loop? That's something a console app will teach you because when you have a console app, you need something to take in arguments. It has to be running all the time, right? It needs to be constantly waiting for the next message to come in. So I just do a simple while true and it'll go on until eternity uh, or my computer blows up or we uh, run out of power. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and run this. So if I press F5 and I can run this and you get your wish is my command sire. So I can go ahead and say, what is the argument that I'm passing in? Help. I put in the help command. Here are a list of available commands. I can write a file, which will write an HTML file. I can read a file, which then reads that file. Because this is a very like archaic, small type of program, I need to write the file first because otherwise it's going to try to read a file that's not there. So I'm going to say write the file. But now if I look on the left-hand side, I can see Python in my little console app just wrote an HTML file for me. So I can even view this inside my browser if I want to. So opening that file that it just created for me in Chrome, 
It's an HTML file because of the extension. Python wrote it for me. It wrote it dynamically based on my argument that I passed right into it. And then I can also read from it too. So this thing's continuing to run. Now I can say, go ahead and read the file. And you can see it actually read the file. So it, it opened this file, it read the contents and it outputted it there. So that is a console app. What can you do with it from there? Hopefully I've given you a, a demonstration, but you could do whatever the hell you want with it. Like th these things do all types of stuff. You look at like all these like enterprise bus systems and all this stuff. Well, it's essentially it. You have an uh, endless running process that's just waiting for the next uh, the, the, the next thing to queue up. All right, so the next thing that every programmer should then work on because where all the jobs are are in web development. So that means HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But the missing key to all of that is actually having your own server. So being able to program your own server is really important. Whatever server st stack you want to use, that's fine. Like this is an example right here of a Django project. This is just like a Django starter project that got spun up and it uses the Python programming language, but I can just go ahead and fire up the server and actually test out full end-to-end -end development, which means client-side development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then how that communicates with a server, which either is running like Node, Python, Java, C Sharp, whatever. How is that interaction occurring? That all happens with a server. The only way you're gonna understand that is to create your own servers. And again, there's endless potential there. You don't have to use Python or just use whatever you're most comfortable with. Most likely, whatever you're using, unless it's like C++, there's probably some sort of server out there uh, that's, that you can tap into. To see this uh, Django server in action, I can just say, I don't even have to, I can just say manage pi run server. So I'm running the built-in development server that comes with Python Django. And then when you're done with your development, what you do is you end up deploying this and you use, instead of the built-in development server, you use, in most cases with Python, a combination of Apache and Nginx. But literally with one command, I can spin up a new project and now I have a working Python web server. So whatever web server you choose, again, just um, really start playing with it. Make your Ajax calls. Can you make an Ajax call from your client side framework to the backend server, get some JSON data, even if it's hello world, can you then display that in the browser? If you can do that, you're well on your way to writing some really complicated apps and getting a job. All right, so the next one is gonna be a project that actually got me started. When I first started, I started with Perl. And why did I choose Perl? Because 10 years ago when I was getting started programming, Perl was still the number one language when it came to text scraping and regular expressions. Every modern language, whether it's Java, Python, whatever, they take their regular expressions from the Perl language. Perl was the one who solidified the way regular expressions should be done. And even to this day, Perl does regular expressions better than other languages. What are regular expressions? If you have no idea, that's what I'm talking about. You need to do some web scraping and automation. I have a, this course here on scraping and automation with Puppeteer. I've built programs that can like scrape YouTube and competitors and give me keyword um, suggestions and such. Now there's already third party tools and such out there that already do that. So I didn't really need to do that, but it was really for my own learning. Um, but you know, again, I do the same thing that I actually recommend for other people. I try to build projects to learn. This is a program that I actually featured on one of my channel, uh, one of my videos the other day. I don't remember, but. Um, this particular Python file will go across the internet. It will grab a free book that's available, which is War and Peace. It's a really large book. And then it will, uh, it will save a copy of it so you're not hitting the server up over and over again. And then it will just iterate through all of the data displaying all the text. So if I want to run this, I just press F5 to start it. And again, this is going to reach across the web. It's going to eventually write a file here on the left-hand side. Uh, we hit the breakpoint, so it needs to... Go ahead and do that, but here's the copy of the book on the left-hand side, and now it's, uh, it's uh, well, really, it just went ahead and write, it wrote a copy of it. So if I wanted to read it, I could sit here uh, and run this script. This is actually going to go through and uh, page by page print each page of that book, which is really, really large, to the console. So again, that's Python, but this is all about data scraping. So this book is available, but what if you needed to, to scrape through all these like individual lines of text? And that's where regular expressions come in. An example of a regular expression, this is a YouTube scraping thing. And you can see I got some of my own uh, personal comments inside the code. But this thing was actually doing some production level stuff where it was getting 
uh, a lot of data for me. It was crunching a lot of data. I actually don't have it running at the moment, but um, what this is using is Node, but here is a regular expression where I, you could see I'm writing all of my data in a pipe sign delimited file. Why do I do that? It's because I've been dealing with some data, data scraping, data crunching. You deal with big data, you need to store it, and um, storing it, you want to store it in the most efficient way possible. I, I typically use pipe sign delimited data files. All right, so the next thing I'm going to recommend for learning how to code, is, and that is to create a video game. A video game programming is so much different than web programming, and I really feel like it gives me much more of a respect for programming in general. And maybe it's just the, the, uh, the endless loop cycle, kind of like how I showed you that while true is infinite loop. Game engines are very similar with that, where every one of those, every object is essentially an endless loop waiting for some you know, some sort of action to do something else, whether it's, you know, an object that can explode on some certain contact or whatever. Really, all objects in video games are these endless loops, and they're all individual endless loops, and how they all communicate with each other. Doing game development, especially in something like Unity, I think really gives you an appreciation for how all that comes together. An example, and, and I'm not trying to show off this code or anything like that, but what I was trying to do is I was actually playing with how difficult would it be for like a, a Parappa the Rappa type game in Unity, and I was just simply playing around. I don't know the, the way to do it, but with game development, there's really no one way of doing it. There's all kinds of different ways of achieving the same thing. And in my case, I ended up you know just basically monkeying around and doing the best I could do. But in Unity, here's an example. But anyway, when I go to play it, if I hit the note, the lady will start dancing. Uh, if I actually hit the right button. There, I hit it right, so now she's going to start dancing. So anyway, I'm not trying to show off the game. It's nothing impressive, but it didn't take me long to do to figure out how do I do, use different objects within Unity? How do I get them to respond to certain click events and all that stuff? The longer you do it, uh, the easier it'll be to do it. But um, just start somewhere, right? The next thing I'm going to talk about is a database. So my thing is like a not, uh, not enough of us are actually talking about database development. And you don't have to be a database expert, but a lot of websites are obviously connected to a database. And to, to really understand how all of that communication goes back and forth, like uh, for instance, just even that a database server is sitting on its own separate uh, port, even on you know your domain or whatever. So little, little things like that are really important. I would say you don't have to have a website that's connecting to a database, but just having anything, even if it's a Python script that is connecting to MySQL, uh, Postgres, or MongoDB. Database development is really important. And while you don't have to be an expert, if you're going to be in web development or anything that involves data, for the most part, you're going to have to understand how SQL works. All right, so that's my list. Uh, let me know what you all think. And if, uh, if there's any sort of recommendations that you think I should add to the list. Feel free to drop that comment. I appreciate all the support. Have a good day and bye.